I'm here with Dr. Group, who's an expert in GMOs. And one of the biggest questions I get in my inbox every single day when I look is how do I avoid GMOs? And specifically when I'm going to the grocery store, what can I buy that's GMO free? Well, we're going to talk about what you're actually going to find in the grocery store, which products are most likely to contain GMOs, and then how to avoid them. So first of all, Dr. Group of Global Healing Center, we're running the Monsanto Video Revolt together. And tell us a little bit about, first of all, is it even possible to avoid GMOs? It is possible to avoid GMOs, and it's something that every family should do. I mean, they should go through their refrigerator, they should go through their cupboard, and the number one thing they should look for is anything corn. If it's organic, then it's GMO-free. But if it's not certified organic, then they're going to need to go through and, and look at any high-fructose corn syrup, anything made from corn, any corn meal, you know, corn chips that most people have. The main thing is you want to avoid anything made of corn. That's and, the number one. And that's exactly right. I have a list here of uh, stuff I published on Natural Society. The number one food item that is genetically modified is corn. And we have a list of the top 10 worst offenders that are most likely to be GMO or you might not think of as GMO. So some of these things on the list might not, for example, be the most proliferant uh, GMO options, but they may be sneaky little incognito GMO agents. So number one is the most prominent, and that's what you said, corn. But that's also high fructose corn syrup, more specifically because they use junk corn. And that's in pretty much every processed food. But don't we eliminate that when we buy organic? You do eliminate that when you buy organic. I mean, there might be some cross-contamination that we just haven't figured out yet, but for the most part, you do eliminate that when you buy organic. But let me just take that corn situation one step further. You have to remember that a lot of the USDA cattle and pig and chicken are fed GMO corn. So when you feed an animal GMO corn in their feed, those genetically modified organisms get into the cow, into the pig, into the chicken, and then you eat that. So it's not like just, I'm going to eliminate corn altogether. You have to have organic meat if you're a meat eater, and then you have to also eliminate corn from your diet. And that's why we need to label GMOs and eradicate them completely because it will ultimately spread. And it's a serious issue. But for right now, we are talking about you know food independence. Uh, so on this list, too, is soy, and that's another one. They say 96-plus percent of corn is genetically modified. They say 94-so percent plus percent of soy is modified as well. And that's even harder, I think, for me at least, to avoid than corn. I mean, soy's in so much stuff. Soy's in everything right now. I mean, just the best I can say on that is look, it, just become an ingredient list shopper. Take the time. You're going to see the same ingredients in most products. You're going to see soy lecithin. You're going to see uh, soy-based products in there. Uh, if it says soy anything on the label and it's not certified organic, just don't buy it. I mean, I'm a big proponent against soy, whether it's certified organic or not, just because I know from all my research and from dealing with people who have switched over to soy because I think it's a good alternative to meat, Soy, it contains phytoestrogens and it contains compounds that are toxic to the body. So I personally recommend people avoid all soy, but to avoid the GMO aspect of it, and we're talking soy lecithin and soy in anything, make sure you do not buy any product that says soy on the ingredient label. And by the way, if, you have, if you're a mother and you're using infant formula, oh, look at that one. infant formula right now. And if it says soy in there or if it says corn in there, get rid of it immediately and switch to raw goat's milk or switch to and from organic goats, of course. Breast or milk. Yeah. Oh, I mean, breast milk, of course, of is, course, is yeah. the best. I mean, I'm talking about any alternatives, but uh, organic raw goat's milk or an organic ba non-soy based uh, baby food. Infant formula, formula is, is the worst. But next up, we have sugar. Also, and genetically modified sugar beets were introduced to the U.S. market in 2009, and they've been modified by Monsanto to resist herbicides. So we already know to avoid sugar, don't we? I, we know it's a health destroyer, and we've seen the research on that with Lipton and others. But never think really, gee, this sugar is genetically modified, do you? I mean, you think about it as a negative health aspect. Well, not you, but the consumer. They go out and they say, I shouldn't eat sugar, but there's another reason not to ever purchase sugar or at least the organic option. So what are some good organic sweeteners? 
Organic sweeteners are going to be raw agave nectar, but uh, I, I really try to stay away from any type of sugar or sweeteners or recommend people stay away from sugars or sweeteners. But if I was to pick one that's been proven since the age of time, it would be raw, locally harvested honey from an organic farm. Uh, that's going to contain glucose oxidase. Honey never goes bad, and it's going to be the be with full of minerals and vitamins and everything else that people can use, and it's actually fairly healthy. People think that they're avoiding sugar. I talk to people, and they say, yeah, I don't eat any sugar. I don't put any sugar on my food or anything. But anytime you go out and you eat out in a restaurant, most likely the bread has sugar in it. The... Uh, the drinks have sugar in it. Ketchup, the condiments have sugar in it. I mean, if you really break it down, there's massive amounts of sugar in all foods, practically. And not, it's not always GMO, but I mean, for example, the energy and protein bars. I was at Whole Foods looking at those the other day for a road trip, and I realized even the organic ones, 35 grams of sugar, and there was two servings. I mean, that's, that's more you should, than you should eat the entire day. Right. I mean, a coconut palm sugar or something like that might be a good replacement from general refined sugar and definitely staying away from high fructose corn syrup. Absolutely. All right. The next one on the list is pretty obvious, but actually most people don't know it's genetically modified, and that is aspartame. And we talked about in a different video how specifically aspartame is made in a 1998 article in The Independent. They talked about it. They actually take the bacteria, genetically modified bacteria, and then take the feces, the poop of the bacteria that is also genetically modified, and then grow the aspartame on that. That's from a Monsanto employee. So Monsanto is at the root of aspartame as well. So anyone who thinks, oh, it's just an alternative, you know, uh, sugar-free sweetener, and it's just amino acid branch chain, it's not. It's genetically modified from feces of bacteria. So I think that's an obvious one. But how do we avoid aspartame? Aspartame is a, is a very strong neurotoxin. Aspartame is one of the most dangerous things out there. It wreaks havoc on the neurological system. But the main thing with aspartame is over 86 degrees Fahrenheit, it converts to formaldehyde. Mm -hmm and can completely start preserving your body. Back in the Gulf War, when all the soldiers were suffering, they linked it to 18 wheelers full of diet sodas and diet drinks that had been sitting in the sun for weeks and baking. And the soldiers were then handed all these drinks. And the ones from those divisions they tracked it back started coming down with Gulf War syndrome and started preserving their bodies from the inside out. So aspartame is extremely dangerous and should be avoided. The thing is, all artificial sweeteners should be avoided. Maybe some stevia would be not artificial, but it's a natural. So if you just get in your mind that all artificial sweeteners should be avoided at all costs, you're doing good. Awesome. The next one is, I think, little known, and that's papayas. Most people don't go to the grocery store and think, well, this papaya might be GMO, but it's actually a real concern. We might not be seeing it widespread yet around the world. But it's something to think about. I, I don't think we really have to talk much. Do you have anything to input about that? Well, the thing is with papaya, uh, not a lot of people eat it. I mean, you don't. it's not one of the things that 90% of the people when they go grocery shopping come home with. It's more of a Southern and South American uh, delicacy. But um, I don't think there's big, huge worry right now. But if you do eat papaya, you want to eat certified organic papaya. Yeah, absolutely. And canola, this is actually a pretty big one. Canola oil is obtained from rapeseed through a series of chemical actions. But explain to people what rapeseed is in the history on canola oil. Well, the big fight against Monsanto really started with rapeseed production. And um, I think rapeseed is mixed with something else to make can canola, isn't See, it? See, that's the whole thing is that rapeseed <laughs> isn't even a real thing at this point. I, it, it, Monsanto has created so many concoctions that canola oil, for example, is not even a real food. No, it's like canola oil is a mix of rapeseed and some some other type of oil. I'm not sure exactly what it is, yeah. but uh, uh, the the fact that uh, rapeseed or canola oil is in a lot of different things and even sometimes mixed in fryers at fast food restaurants yeah. is what you have to avoid. So, I mean, another good point with oils is Make sure that when you're at a restaurant, you know, you can ask them what kind of oil they cook stuff in and just avoid fast food restaurants anyway, yeah, uh, because, yeah. I mean, that's just going to all the stuff at a fast food restaurant. The beef is genetically f uh, fed cattle. The, you know, 
uh, oils that they use are genetically the modified. The salad, the, the supposedly healthy salad. We did an article has, uh, you know, for example, McDonald's, the McNuggets have a the same chemicals used to make a yoga mat. They have the remanufactured type of meat. They have, It's horrible. I mean, there's no question. And then people complain about the horse meat and the burgers in the UK version of Burger King. But the fact of the matter is there's way worse things than even the horse meat, which is pretty crazy itself. So the best thing is I would just avoid canola anyway. Really, the best oils to use, just forget about all those oils. The best oils to use are going to be organic, cold-pressed, unrefined coconut oil. You can cook with that. It goes up to high temperatures without denaturing the oil. It's great for the skin, too. It's a medium-chain triglyceride oil. Coconut oil is reversing Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's and dementia right now. It's an amazing substance. Use grapeseed oil, certified organic grapeseed oil, and the best is just olive oil. I mean, you can use olive oil for anything. It tastes great. Not high heat cooking, though. Yeah. Not with your cooking. I mean, you can use it for salads and you can use it for other stuff. If you're, if you're cooking at low temperatures, it's not that bad. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we could go into detail about that, making sure you don't even cook with a Teflon pan right. and stuff. But for because, now, it's a good alternative, yeah. at least, to canola oil, yes. which hopefully no one's buying. I've never actually yeah. seen anyone purchase a big thing of canola oil to cook with. That would be like Well, buying. there are. Restaurants purchase it, and then there are people that actually purchase canola oil. So. Right. Well... They need to stop doing that. <laughs> Next one is cotton oil, and that's originating in India and China, and, and of course is oftentimes GMO. I mean, GMO cotton is a pretty big thing as well. I mean, obviously purchase organic shirts and clothing if you can, but I mean, cottonseed oil is something that's in a lot of products, and it just goes back to checking the ingredients once again, doesn't it? The best thing I can say for cottonseed, it's usually cottonseed oil, and you will find it on ingredient lists. Just look for uh, the ingredients, and if you see cottonseed oil on there, don't yeah, buy it. That's not a, that's not a really big thing. No one needs an alternative to cottonseed oil. No one uses it effectively. And eight is dairy, because we know that you know the bovine growth hormone, Monsanto's cloned injectable hormone that goes into the cows and ultimately kills them, is still in 30% of the milk in the United States. So ultimately, it comes down to, sure, you can buy organic milk, but even raw milk is better or any form of goat's milk, as you were mentioning. I, I think avoiding dairy is actually recommended to a pretty large degree by most experts Oh, anyway. I mean, especially if it's not organic. Yeah, I recommend good substitutes like hemp milk, almond milk, rice milk, and make sure they're all organic and uh, or make your own. I mean, I make my own almond milk from organic uh, it's almonds very cheap that aren't. Too irradiated because a lot of the stuff is irradiated coming into the country. So yeah. uh, the recombinant bovine growth hormone in dairy and in cheese and everything like that is actually, we've seen a tremendous rise in ovarian and reproductive cancers, especially breast cancer in women. It wreaks havoc on children's hormone levels, wreaks havoc on male hormone levels, and it wreaks, hormone, uh, wreaks havoc on female hormones. So you have a hormonal disruption that happens. And not only that, the cows have mastitis and you end up with uh, pus residues in the milk and blood uh, cell residue in the milk. And it's just one thing that should be avoided because when that happens, the cows are shot up full of antibiotics, they're shot up full of vaccinations, they're shot up with all kinds of other stuff. And ultimately that residue comes out through the milk. Definitely. So, so the last two are not really as big, and I don't think we need to go in depth, but they're zucchini and yellow squash, and they're modifying to resist certain viruses. They're not really a big deal right now, such as corn or anything like that or soy, but it's something to think about if you're constantly purchasing zucchini and squash to make sure you're buying organic alternatives or at least non-GMO, because this will be an increasing issue over the years. Yes. So I think this helps a lot of people. I mean, even if they're not going to buy 100% organic, they can know that these are the trigger items. We're going to put them up on screen for your convenience right now. And you'll be able to at least identify these things that you need to purchase non-GMO every single time you go to the store. Yes. I, I recommend people educate themselves about GMOs. Uh, watch the movie Genetic Roulette is a good documentary. Another one is Seeds of Death. You know, that you can watch both of those for free on YouTube, and that'll give you a good understanding on uh, GMOs. And also, Anthony, I recommend everybody watch our video that we did on how to detoxify your life of GMOs and how to detoxify your body we'll of GMOs. We'll put that link up on the, on the screen right now for people to click on, too. And uh, also participate in, of course, 
the Monsanto Video Revolt, July 24th, or MonsantoVideoRevolt.com. Learn the information. Upload your videos against Monsanto. Thanks a lot for watching, and we're going to do another video real shortly here on some more information. Thank you.